Good day. This is Legal Pretorius, Legal Advisor with Freedom of Religion South Africa, of RSA for short. I'm joined by my colleague, for RSA Executive Director, Michael Swain. Now, the right to raise your own children in accordance with your own religious beliefs and moral, moral values is part and parcel of the right to freedom of religion. And school governing bodies play an important part in protecting those parental rights. To talk to us about the importance of school governing bodies and particularly the importance of parents' participation in the upcoming 2024 school governing body elections is Mr. George Morassi. Now, George is the National Development Officer with FEDSAS, that's the Federation for South African School Governing Bodies, and FEDSAS represents and protects the rights, powers, and privileges of school governing bodies, and per extension, parents. George, welcome, and thank you for joining our discussion. Uh, good morning, Lizel, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. It's a privilege to have you with us. So to start us off, can you tell us what are school governing bodies and who do they consist of? Uh, Liz, when we're talking of school governing bodies as per section 20 of the South African Schools Act, th these are our statutory and elected bodies and they consist of, or may I just uh, be specific that these are governing bodies for public schools and they comprise of uh, our elected uh, parent representatives. We have got learners in there and these are learners from grade eight upwards. We do have educators and non-teaching staff and they have to be in that particular school. We've got uh, co-opted members and then we've got the principal by virtue of his hair of or official capacity at the school. Why are school governing bodies important? Um, and what are their powers and their prerogatives? SGBs play a very crucial role in the governance of the school. And their powers are outlined in section 20 and 21 of the Schools Act. And uh, their section 20 powers are the following. Among others, one, they adopt the constitution uh, that regulates their functions and procedures as the SGB. They tend, they develop the vision and mission of the school. They have the responsibility to adopt the school's code of conduct for learners. They have the responsibility to support the principal educators, other staff members of, uh, I mean, at the school in the performance of their uh, professional functions. They've got the responsibility to determine the times of the school day. They've got the responsibility to administer and control school property, buildings, grounds, and uh, hostels and so forth. Meaning if they wish to rent a school hall out to generate an income. And they also have the responsibility to recommend to the head of a department for the appointment of educators at the school. And then you've got the, your section 21 uh, functions, Liesl, where in the school governing body has the power to determine the school's admission policy. It has got the authority to determine the school's language policy. They've got the responsibility to adopt the code of conduct uh, for learners, participate in the selection and appointment of educators at the school, manage the school finances, approve uh, budgets, decisions regarding religious uh, observances and instructions at the school. We have uh, often said that school governing bodies are gatekeepers uh, and watchmen uh, for schools. And maybe could you give us a, a sense of to what extent can a school governing body decide, for example, whether to incorporate uh, some form of guideline or protocol that the Department of Education might be putting forward? Uh, what kind of role and responsibility can they play, for example, in even the selection of, of content that might be taught in the school? Obviously, 
uh, to fulfill the CAPS curriculum uh, requirements that government is entitled to set down. As you know, this is a subject of debate, especially when it comes to content that uh, a school may provide. However, uh, I, it is my belief that the school governing bodies, mind you, as governance, we determine, we decide what goes as long as it is not contra any form of legislation whatsoever. We come from a diverse backgrounds. Therefore, before we can arrive at a decision to say, we're going to follow this kind of a curriculum, let's debate it and come up to a decision eventually. Parents can inform this even more than the learners themselves, because what you feed my child is extremely important to me. If we are to talk about content, what can you feed my child? Governance plays the most crucial role in this regard. That's the SGB to say, are we putting this into, are we allowing this into the curriculum to be fed to our children or not? So why should parents vote and stand for school governing body? The question should be, or add, as an add-on to the question should be, what do parents want for their children? If I want the best for my child, I will definitely stand in to be uh, voted. So it's a crucially important that uh, parents should uh, vote or stand to be elected to, Liz Lama say we indeed, we encourage parents to actively participate, stand to be uh, elected and serve their schooling communities alike. It's, 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 it's our plea, we urging them to do that, that is if they, if we indeed as parents worry about our children and what we want to for uh, to become of them. Yeah. What does the school then have to provide parents with? Maybe you can just jog us through the process, the requirements uh, that this entails, a sort of step by step overview. It's the responsibility of the school, Michael, to ensure that it provides all the relevant information about the election process uh, to the parent and ensure transparency at all times. And uh, the, these, uh, pl please note that elections are being conducted in accordance with provincial election regulations. They may differ from one province to the other, but uh, they are well aligned. Uh, legislatively, and they ought to be transparent, they ought to be fair, and they ought to be uh, inclusive. The school should communicate uh, the following details to all stakeholders. One, when is the election date? What is the eligibility criteria for uh, to stand as a candidate of uh, to can nominate one the nomination process and the school should also specify the procedures for nomination uh, nominating of candidates and this will include uh, how nomination forms are submitted the verification of eligibility the timelines for notifications and all these have to be clear to the as stakeholders and schools should provide information to voters about the candidates who is standing as a candidate what will their roles be what are their skills and expertise meaning when i campaign i need to tell you who am i briefly what am i bringing to the party and what skills do i uh, uh, possess. This enables the parents to make an informed decision about me as an, a candidate. Uh, should they vote for me or should they overlook me? And the school should also outline the procedure for conducting the actual uh, vote. So we want to know where will the elections be taking place? This are, where are the polling stations? What is the voting process? Is there any security measures in place and so forth? 
And uh, there must also be independent observers during the election process to ensure uh, fairness and integrity. It's all about integrity. Having an election that uh, don't have any, uh, I mean, an integrity is tantamount to a not. So there should be clear procedures for counting of votes, the declaring of uh, results. And these processes, Michael, should always be transparent and should be open to scrutiny at all times. What is quite an eye-opener uh, is the scale of these elections. In other words, this is not just a sort of a, 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 a case of, you know, have a small meeting in a classroom and a few parents are there and put your hands up if you want to stand. Uh, and, and then it's that that's that. This is a major, you know, obviously province by province national election. And as I understand it, when you become elected as an office bearer on a school governing body, it's a three year period uh, that you are basically standing for. And therefore, you have a significant opportunity in those three years to really shape the direction, the culture, the context, the experience for the learners, obviously in their best interests, for really a, like almost like a generation of, of students. So uh, I just am wanting to note the, the significance of these SGB elections. I could never have said it any better. These are national elections. 2024, there will be three very big elections. Therefore, this is an opportunity for parents to say, in these three years, I am going to make a difference. I am going to take charge of my child's future because it's all about a future here, Michael. George, very importantly, you, you said that one of the challenges uh, that you face and where you are really involved is getting the information, getting the empowerment of school governing bodies uh, into the local rural communities. And one of the things that we really want to encourage religious leaders in particular is to also help to disseminate information and to encourage participation because you find that many religious organizations, they are very much on the ground, so to speak, at grassroots community level. And so we, we, we want to obviously encourage as many uh, of those religious leaders as possible to understand the significance of school governing body elections and to also help as almost distributors and, and encouragers of participation and information for school governing bodies. So uh, we, we certainly would hope that that would be a, a helpful coming up. The Our uh, religious leaders are best placed. Uh, our places of worship are the best places where these campaigns can be uh, uh, carried out. As you know, parents, we voluntarily go to church. When you call us to meetings, we don't come. But to church, we go voluntarily. The information is there and can be freely and readily be made available. So we implore our uh, faith leaders to please uh, take this battle forward, inform our parents of the upcoming uh, elections, empower them. And if we are all worried about the future of a child, we will do it at every corner available. But most of us, you will find us in church and let's talk about these things in church and they will be disseminated beyond the church walls. Now, if parents want more information um, about school governing bodies and the elections and help and how to get involved or how to serve in, on school governing bodies, um, where can they go to for that, that information? The Department of Basic Education website has a whole lot of information. I think that is what is flying the most school governing body, uh, upcoming school governing body elections. That is what's being flighted the most. So there's a lot of information on the basic education website. I've seen a whole lot of information on 4SA website. I've 
There is a lot of information on the FEDSAS website. So uh, parents can get uh, additional information. As a parent, you need to be involved in the school because you want to know what are they feeding your child. Um, and the religious community has a part to play. And in, you know, religious leaders, faith leaders, as you said, to informing their, their members um, when they come to church or a synagogue or mosque or whatever religious institution it is of how to be involved um, in these school governing bodies and the, the upcoming elections. And I think what stood out for me is there, there are three important steps here. You need to ensure that you're on that voters role. You need to, if you want to be a candidate, stand, um, uh, you know, complete that nomination form or support other suitable parents to, to, to stand as candidates and then vote, vote, vote in the upcoming elections. But as you say, each province will uh, publish their specific guidelines and if your child is in a school that school is uh, obligated to give you all the necessary information and we trust yours that parents of children in public schools will heed your words your call that they might they need to take charge they need to get involved and they need to make a difference in the best interest of their children so the upcoming school governing bodies then next year in march between the 1st and the 31st of March. Um, and parents for SA, we also urge you to get involved in those elections and start to prepare and get ready now. George, thank you so much for this interview. Again, it was a pleasure talking to you about this important topic. This is Michael Swain of 4SA. Remember to like and share this video and then click on the subscribe button to make sure that you never miss our video updates on vital religious freedom issues.